push, 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 zone them back, allow Bane to farm. If we get shoved in, great. Because that's what we want, because she'll be able to easily kill our Bane. All right? That's what we should do in this particular matchup. Remember, always ask yourself those three questions, and you will easily be able to figure out where is the best place to put the lane. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to The Coach Approach. It's your coach, Becca the Black Baker, and today we're going to be looking at a Zyra support gameplay. Oh, you have a Udyr jungle. You should have dodged. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Zyra gameplay here. Um, this is going to be a bronze game, like I said. Um, but before we get into it, well, actually, I wanted to say that I, I specifically chose this game because I feel like our KDA in the, the time frame of the game was way too long. I would assume there are some plays here or there that kind of cost the game in the first place. So I want to go over it and see specifically what happened. Not saying that we could have won the game. Um, and you guys know I don't only look at losers. Don't say Avery only picks out the losers. I don't. I look at these stats and I see, okay, this game looks like this was winnable, but what happened? Or maybe this game wasn't winnable, but I still want to know what happened. Or even if you do win, why did it take so long? So I look at a lot of factors. If you guys like a free VOD, make sure you join my Discord, um, and you guys can get one every weekend. I open a room, put your RP.GG in there. If you guys would like to be one of the players that get a VOD almost every week, make sure you are talking. The higher level you are, the more priority you have over everybody else to get a VOD each week. Without further ado, let's make sure I get my shoutouts real quick. Slippery Slappers, Captain Reed, Axonology, Elana, ABC Troll, Tiny Panther, Infinity, and Jerry Bear. Thank you guys for making me being me being able to do VODs possible, me being able to do any videos possible, able to do this free coaching and this things like that for people possible. Uh, without you guys, there really would be no extra things that I can do for people um, that want to just improve at the game and just don't really have the money to pay or just, you know, uh, don't really want to pay. So thank you guys. Make sure if you guys see me in the Discord, you thank them as well because they are the heroes. So without further ado, let's get started here and let's go ahead and open up a what you call it there. Um, all right. So we're going against a Seraphine, right? And we have a Samira. So when we look at this matchup, we want to ask ourselves those three questions. You know, what does my ADC want to do to win lane? What does their ADC want to do to win lane? And then how can I prevent the enemy ADC from doing what they want to do while also doing what I want to do? Vayne wants to just kind of scale up and farm, take fights when she gets cutlass. Samira most likely wants to just kill you, right? And when we look at this, there's really no setup for it with uh, Seraphine being kind of like a long range type of character, whereas Samira is more like I'm in your face type of character. So with that in mind, the best thing you can do to prevent any type of death would be to help Vayne freeze it here, which means that if there are any, if you can keep your body around the wave so that when Seraphine or Samira uses an ability, it hits the wave as well. Now, obviously, Samira's abilities aren't really that wave friendly unless she's in melee range, but for the most part, you want to just try to like bait Seraphine into damaging the minions if you can. And then, of course, go ahead and step to the side when you want to poke and make sure that when you are poking, you go right back in the bush so you do not draw min minion aggro. When you draw minion aggro, you break the freeze if she's trying to set up one or you start having it push. So... As I said, kind of sit in the bush. Nope, nope, sit in the bush. You're too far back. You want to back her off. You don't want Samira to do what she just did and walk up and just shoot her. Okay, what the fuck is she doing? Ping her back. <laughs> don't allow shit like this to happen. <laughs> Ping them back. You can't just let them do weird shit like that. Keep them in line. Keep them in check. Once again, you should be occupying these bushes. Remember that Patreon Zyra gameplay I did? I was occupying these bushes like fucking crazy. Zyra's a plant-based champion. Put her ass in some bushes. That's 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 the rule of thumb right there. If you're playing the plant-based champ, make sure they're in bushes. No, I'm just kidding. But you can definitely zone her back so that she doesn't look for the opportunity to go in or to go in and poke. And that goes for a lot of champions. Even um, when I'm playing against the Caitlyn, right? And I'm playing that zoning type of champion bot, I will still sit in a bush because they're scared. They're very, very scared. 
but you see how much you're like walking up walking out and stuff like that that right there makes it so oh i'm not as scared because i know where she is and i know what she's planning and stuff like that your body language tells a lot about what you're about to do and what's going to happen if i'm like playing against you i can tell you when you're going to do something so then i'd be ready to avoid it and that's how you kind of see my mechanics in some of my games you're like well your mechanics are pretty decent it's because i kind of think about it before it happens just to make sure i have enough wiggle room to kind of play around so now that your body language speaks a lot right now she's about to try to hit you with something it's pretty obvious and then she throws right body language speaks a lot and the lower elo you are the more obvious it is the higher elo you get the more like sketch it might look so as I said, we don't really want to shove this way. We want to let them shove into us. So our main goal of this way of this lane, I have a scaling ADC. Their ADC always wants to fight. Um, we don't win the 2v2 really, unless they just straight up suck. So I want to make sure that I'm sitting in these bushes, scaring them back, not trying to really fight, but just scare them back so that my vein can farm and help them push the way back. When they start being aggressive, then I'll, I'll try to stand near the wave. But if I can't, it's fine, right? So push, 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 zone them back, allow Vayne to farm. If we get shoved in, great, because that's what we want, because she'll be able to easily kill our Vayne, all right? That's what we should do in this particular matchup. Remember, always ask yourself those three questions, and you will easily be able to figure out where's the best place to put the lane. Because I know when you're playing Zyra, you feel like, well, I, I want to kill them, I want to kill them. Zyra's not a kill champion. She's just a poke champion. She'll just get kills because, you know, some players might just suck. But for the fact of the matter is, when you're playing against better players, she's not going to be able to just get straight free kills. So you have to use the strength of, like, zoning, the strength of poking. Because you getting fed is not how you win the game. Her having a safe laning phase is how we win the game. That's just what supports do. Make sure that these guys are safe. Make sure that these guys can have a decent laning phase. That's all supports do in laning phase. Is basically watch them. So you want to make sure that you're playing to the strengths of both your champions. Start with yours, and then once you start learning the strengths of your ADCs, play with that. Because you see how much you care about getting a kill? That just literally got you killed. Do you actually live? Okay, someone dies. I was going to fucking say. There's no way in hell nobody died there. But that got you killed. Right? And so paying attention to, like, shoving the wave because you want to keep the person under tower is a lot more acceptable than just, I wanna get kills and that's why I kinda get killed. You know what I mean? Because at least when you're shoving the wave, you're doing what you're supposed to do in your lane and your ADC is having an easier time to farm. You looking to try to fight, get kills does not do anything for your ADC. You can zone back without actually doing anything. Um, do you see how in that video that I was playing, I was pretty much almost close to full mana, but yet I was throwing out a lot of abilities. It's cause you have to conserve your mana, be patient. You know, really only go for that poke if you have to. My goal is to make sure this vein can safely farm. I just want to zone them back so we don't have to fight. That's all. When you're placing your pinks in your bush, put them in the corner right there. This will see a little bit more up here. And that will see a little bit more this way. I like that you were watching that. But as you see, you're not a kill champion. So don't play Zara like I can kill people. Because I feel like that's kind of where the problem lies, honestly. You want to kill, you want to kill, you want to feel like you have to be the carry. And Zyra is strong, not saying she isn't. But she does not play lane the same way she plays mid to late game. Mid to late game, you throw out all your stuff, you trap somebody, they're probably going to explode. Right? Not all the time, but there's a very high percent chance. Landing phase? That doesn't work like that. So... Even two levels up, you did no damage to her. And then kill, get, trying to go for a kill got you killed again. <laughs> if you just stop playing like you're the carry and play more like I have to support the carry, <laughs> your laning phase will be a lot better. You don't have to play like that throughout the entire game. Play like that in your lane though. You are the support, no matter how much you want to carry. I don't care if you're playing Bran. I don't care if you're playing Pike. I don't care if you're playing, I don't know who else is like a kill lane uh, type of champ. Um, Velkos, stuff like that. 
You're not playing lane to kill people as a support. You're only playing lane to make sure that my ADC is having a decent laning phase. Kills will come, not saying it won't, but that's not your priority because that's not your job. That's not the priority for any champion in the game. They don't just start the game and be like, I need kills. That's not how it works. Kills just kind of happen to come when it's the opportunity for them to come. They don't just come because you just want to straight go for them, especially when players are smart. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, look to play laning phase like you're trying to support your ADC. Give them a decent laning phase. This does not mean don't go for free kills that happen to walk in your vicinity, but her strength lies in poking. If you can hit them, you're going to do way more damage than this, but if you can hit them for 20 HP, Every 30 seconds. All right, it ain't 30 seconds. That's a fucking lie. Actually, it's going to be like, maybe like every eight seconds. Mm, I don't know. Players tend to play a lot more scared when you do things over and over. So we'll just say, we'll say 15 seconds. Every 15 seconds, you take 50 HP. Right? You do the math because I hate fucking math, even though you have to use math all the time, right? So 50 HP every 15 seconds, right? How much HP does she have? Let me see, because I don't fucking know by base, by heart. How much HP does she have? She has um, 1,100. We'll just leave the fact that she has that 19. So she has 1,100, right? And you can do 15, 50, I'm sorry, 50 damage every 15 seconds every 15 seconds right that's a lot of fucking damage okay and eventually it'll get to the point where she's really low maybe even like right here then you look for the all-in because that is kill range what you're doing right now is not giving a fuck about having that poke you're just like i'm killing you bitch yeah back the fuck up and then you go back to like walking around and doing stuff instead sit in a bush I'm a pokey bitch. And then she backs up and you're not wasting a lot of abilities. You're not wasting a lot of mana. And if something happens, you have abilities to be able to pre prevent that from happening. And you're also not too deep to the fact that you can't do anything and you're caught, right? Very, very different. You can do the same thing without actually committing so much resources to doing what you're trying to do just by looking, like just by being scary. Okay. Didn't really have to flash. I don't think you were in any danger. It could have been though, but that doesn't really matter too much. Okay. Oof, Samir almost actually got that. Where are you going? Wait, <laughs> wait, wait a second. Where are you going? If we go before this, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, you go a little bit before this fight happens, right? Maokai's dead. Now it's hard in lane. We get these kills. If Malzahar were to come from anywhere, it's right here. So there's no way you're dead. You don't have to leave. You can help them try to finish that dragon uh, before you're looking to bail. Because if we just go back, and let's say we didn't bail and we focus this dragon right now, you were good to go. But instead we focus the kill. She should be out, no? Yeah, she is out. Where was she? Where was he, by the way? Yeah, see? So there's no danger for you at all to kind of overstay there. Just because you're low doesn't mean you're useless. Remember that. That's my motto. Just because you're low doesn't mean you're useless. I like that you try to go mid to defend. Very smart. What the fuck? I blinked? Dude, all these champions nowadays just fucking explode people. Oh, she just like got destroyed. Ooh dear, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't like the positioning, but that was a good ult. <laughs> I don't like that you were damn near hugging those two. <laughs> but it was a good ult, nonetheless. That was layers. You just like walk away. It's funny. Like, all right, I did my part. <laughs> Ludier, good luck. 
<laughs> that shit's hilarious. Alright. Yep, you're doing fine. There's literally nothing for you to do. So, you're doing good. Alright, leave. Good job. And that's, we got some farm, we got some we got some damage on that tower, good. Now we prep for drag. We should have prepped for it a little bit earlier, but I do like the fact that you were down there. Get these timings kind of like correct, because it is kind of hard. You got to make sure you're balancing. You can't have, well, I'm getting objectives up here, and the timing for objectives are down there. You got to make sure that they're kind of together. And it is very difficult to do, especially when your team is like off doing some random shenanigans to set up for something that your team's not even ready for themselves, but that just kind of comes down to you pinging and making sure that you're there. This fight doesn't even have to take place. Yeah, that fight did not have to happen. There was nothing to get. And as you see, we don't even get anything. We did a fight and we got literally nothing out of it. No towers, no nothing. It was just a bullshit fight. And when you're behind, I'm not saying you are, but when you are behind, those bullshit fights like don't really do much. And when you're ahead, those bullshit fights fuck you over. Because if you're ahead and you're trading, obviously those players are catching up. Is there a reason why we walked down this way? Let me watch this back. Because there's ward coverage here, and there's ward coverage there. There's no reason for you to walk here when this is kind of the more, this kind of is more priority of helping. So a really good thing you want to pay attention to is who has Rift Herald. And when you see them on a tower, you kind of know like they're about to drop it pretty much. So you want to get ready to be in rotation. Because if you were already, if you did that same walk and you were right here, you could definitely prevent this from happening. Or at least, you know, could have made sure that one of them didn't die. Once again, you're low. You're not useless. Help him. Okay, if she was better, she would have straight out played that guy. Did she not have boots? She does. Yeah, she just sucks. Be very, very careful about doing that type of stuff. Like, if you're not, if I mean, if you can make sure you maintain a safe distance, it's okay to go help your team. You don't want them to die, or you don't want them to be that low. Be like, okay, I'm coming to help, and then she just kills him, and then you're fucked too because you're low. They can really only target one player, unless it's like obviously the champion that can do majority of targeting an entire team, right? That dark harvest map, what the fuck? Okay. Anyway, remember, just because you're low does not mean you're useless. You're strong, all right? You're good. Keep that distance. All your abilities are extremely long range. There's no way you die. You snare them from long range, walk up closer, do your stuff before they can even get out, and then walk back again. Go ahead and go to bot lane. You know Sejuani's pushing. There you go. I like it. Set up for rift. I mean drag. Hit that. Hit, hit these. Go, go up here and hit these. Let's go back again. Let's look. Where is everybody at this particular moment? Samir is mid. Maokai's top. Mazahar's top. So two are top. So Juani's down bot. Right? Then Samir is. Uh, Seraphine is top. They're all top. So Juani's right there. You came down here. They're still here because there's a ward here. So this is safe to go get, and you will not die. Go get these things. Really keep more tabs on like where everybody is, because you can easily plan to do a lot more knowing where they are and where they're coming from. Okay, you're missing two players, and you don't have a jungler. This dragon is not worth fighting for, because you have no smite anyway. You actually got, my lord. Every time. I, I swear, there is not one replay where I say a statement and it doesn't go how it's supposed to go. You, your jungler has, you, you have no jungler. There's no way you're getting this smite. Boom, they steal it. Okay. You can't dive, you guys have no HP and no mana. Boom, dive is successful. What the fuck? Okay, there's three players and you're by yourself, half HP no ultimate. There's no way you'll fight, boom, you kill them all. What the hell? Like, I swear, there is not one specific game where I say something and it's like fucking factual. It's always some of that bullshit. 
Dude, I fucking hate. I hate this game. Okay, I just let me stress this out right now. How the fuck are you supposed to learn if shit never goes according to <laughs> according to how it's supposed to go anyway? <laughs> Why is this fucking game so goddamn toss up? Jesus. Nah, but seriously, you do want to think more about that. You know, I don't have a jungler. We're not gonna get this dragon. No, no reason to stay because if you guys would have died and they got dragon, it'd have been like you weren't gonna get it anyway. Udyr was way up here. You know what I mean? So be very, very cautious about that when you enter the higher elos because those type of situations, you don't get away with that that much. She got fucked up. Did we not ping her back? Because we know they're right here. Back, 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 ping back, 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 back. Okay. <laughs> You just let it, you just let it happen. Why'd you do that? You know this is bad. There's two backing. This is obvious, she's about to go Abe shit. Ping her back. Then you're like, well, boom, snare. I did all I could do. And you just walk away. <laughs> you're like fucking, you're like Patrick on SpongeBob when they were trapped in that damn dome. I don't know if you've seen it, but they were trapped in like Sandy's house and it was frozen. This dude goes up to the door, says, all right, open sesame, and nothing happens. And he's like, well, I've done all I can do. <laughs> like, that's, <a> pretty, <laughs> that's pretty much what the fuck just happened. This is hilarious. I don't condone you wasting your ult, by the way. I notice a lot of the times that you use your ult is because you snare somebody. Use your ult for multiple reasons. Don't just use it because you want to kill. They make your ceilings faster, so you can use it as a... Uh, I'm using it as a peel me method. Even if you miss it, the ceilings are gonna slow down, like a Trendomir, for example. So use your ult for a lot more than just I'm killing somebody or I'm catching somebody out. Use it for peel as well. Imagine if you had it there. All right, this is rough. Very bad call. Who called that? That better not have been you. I've taught you better than this. No way that was your call. There's no fucking way you called that shit. Oh, okay. It wasn't a dragon. They were pinging, not you. Okay, I thought you pinged to get the Baron. I was like, what in the fuck? Hell no, you weren't getting that. But you're just trying to clear words. I mean, it wasn't a safe time to do so. I'm not gonna write this down, but just, you know, keep in mind, there's really no reason to go ward if it's not safe. I know a lot of videos are like, well, you're supposed to die as support when you're warding a lot because yeah, that's your job. And so you die a lot, it's okay. No, it's fucking not okay. Don't go dying for wards. Just don't go ward if it's gonna lead to a death. I'd rather you not have vision than them not have a support. So, you know, once again, wasting the ult, really work on your ults. Because you can use them in a way better situations. <laughs> Don't be so afraid in these team fights too. Like you throw all your stuff and then you stand really, really far back. Toss some autos, especially when you have red buff like that. Toss some autos. Get ready to throw up more abilities. Be a threat. Because when you're walking back, they're like, I guess I don't focus Zyra because she's too far away. Let me just focus this guy on one shot. But if you're there, it's like, okay, who the fuck do I focus? And then it team splits up the team's pressure. Um, and just like I said, make sure you're at a safe distance. I'll do more support Zyra gameplays for you. Um, I'll try to get some more did this month if I can. Because I don't mind playing her again. And I know you said you want to see some other champs too. So I'll keep that in mind. But I do want to get a couple more support games in for my Patreon. Support and ADC, I want to get more of. Top two. So those are the three roles coming up. Okay. Stay with Udyr. Yep, and then just leave. Leave, 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 leave. There you go. Beautiful. Good damn, you didn't have to walk that fucking far. You didn't have to walk that down far. That was that was wild. Okay, go top. Cool. 
Okay, so this last fight is probably game. You don't have Fizz. Back, 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 team back. You don't have Uder. You don't have Van. Back, 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 back. Ping them back. Why are you still here? Back, back, run away. You being there lets her be there. And we already know this person is fucking crazy. So we don't want to give them any idea to do anything. Back, 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 back. Uder is down there. We want to pressure. We want to push mid. I like that assistance. Very good. Ping them back, though. You only have two. Assist, assist, spam, spam, spam. Ping them back, ping assist. Back, assist. But you're trying to do everything kind of by yourself, right? You did two pings, and now they look to do something, right? We don't care about warding. We don't care about anything. This guy's pressuring. Do something with the fact that this guy's got two players on his ass, and nothing happens. And this is why a lot of players in low elo are like, Actually, it's in high elo too. I'm not even gonna just gonna say just gonna say low elo. But a lot of people are like, dude, my teammates just doing something stupid. How do I get my teammates to not do something stupid like that? Do something while they're doing something fucking stupid. Like you, you can't control them sometimes, and that that's just how it is. Like you're not gonna be able to control these players. But like, do something while 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 he's like doing something stupid. And I always say like, there's really. There's really very rare times you have a team of feeders and they don't do anything. It's very rare. And those are the games where you automatically lose. She might be 10 deaths in, but she's doing stuff. 11 deaths in, doing stuff. 9 deaths in, doing stuff. Like the, it, it sucks, but they're not useless, right? And so use that Udir as that whole situation and go ahead and do something else. But now we're like, I'm going to go fight this fight that you're going to lose. She's up here. And you lost a teammate. If you win this fucking fight, I'm retiring as a coach. Okay. I was going to say. Because clearly League of Legends is just all over the place to a goddamn point. Coaching does not fucking work. Okay. If I can't predict some shit like this, I just need to throw in the damn towel. Yeah. So this fight was just not going to work. You were missing one. One just died. This is a 3v5. If you guys won that fight, man. Coaches just, there's no, there's no need for them. If we can win shit like that in League of Legends nowadays... This game has went to the dogs. Um, but yeah, that play was definitely stemming off of a play somebody else did. And it was a terrible one. When you could have this play, pushing mid, stem off of the play that he's doing. When someone's doing something stupid, remember, look to do something of equal value or greater. So when you have someone doing something dumb, try to get... Uh, Something done equal or greater value. Very, very helpful. It'd be greater value to get a tower in, in an inhib and possibly just fight the 4v3 or the 3v3 um, for his death. Because then if those two rotate, it's a 3v2. And either way, they can't get shit anyway. And then we rotate top and we get this one because I really was pushing top. Like, that would have been the gameplay right there. Okay, don't need to ward. There's no reason to get vision. You could just get caught out and die. There's no reason to get vision here. Nothing's up. Baron's coming up in what? A minute and 37 seconds. And Cloud is coming up in a minute and 26 seconds. Right? Which one's more realistic for us to get? The Cloud or the Baron? The Cloud. And on top of that, you might be saying, well, I thought you wanted me to ward early. I do. Don't get me wrong. You're doing a good job. But at the same time, not necessary. And yeah, you could have got caught. You didn't have to flash there because she missed, but it was a panic button. I feel you. But as you see, I just said what was gonna happen and it happened. This is why there was no reason to do for, for that. There was no reason at all for that. Cause now you're flashless and you could have been warding, pinging your team to be over here rather than doing what, what you did over there. And we're just gonna give up another dragon because we're late. And we could have been using that time to ping and we could have all been prepared and we could have all been walking together as a team to go ward. And you're just kind of waiting. And you're not really doing anything. You're just letting them die. No pings coming from you. Right? And you could get the argument, well, I'm typing and tell them what to do. You cannot... Monkeys can't read, okay? There's a student that was like, well, didn't you see that they trained this one monkey or whatever to read? And he could read some words. Like, shut the fuck up! Don't ruin my goddamn analogy, okay? Scientist trains monkey trains monkeys with lights and sounds. All right, that's what you do. They, there's no reason to type. I guess I don't know if you were, but there's no reason to type. 
use those damn pings. Let them know what's up. Ping more. Two pings is, is nothing. You're not getting anything done with two pings. Let's just see how many pings we pinged regardless in the past. How many minutes? 39 minutes. So 39 to 33. All right, let's see how many pings we got within the six minutes. We pinged Cloud Dragon. We pinged Assistance. So it's one, two, three. Three instances. So we got three pings in six minutes. Three, like three ping types in six minutes. And we only ping twice on two of those pings. That is not enough to tell your team what to do and what not to do. You are definitely going to have them run around and do stupid shit. It's just not enough. And then we have no flash because we wasted over here trying to go ward. So we just instantly get caught and die. And then, yeah. Um, do not go ward when um it isn't safe if you must do it you need team to come with you and let them lead so for the most part though definitely number one if we have a if, we, if we're strong and our adc is weak we're not winning i mean potentially you can but we're just going to put it as straightforward as possible if you're doing well and your adc fucking blows um, in terms of like kills and stuff, you're gonna lose. And a lot of the factor I think you might be in that situation that your ADC sucks is because you don't care about them. <laughs> like realistically, you're not playing bot lane like it's a 2v2. You're kind of playing it like it's a 1v2 and you're just kind of doing all the work and you're pretty much just, pretty much just kind of doing whatever you want to do. And even in that support game that I played on my Patreon, that game, was not in my elo like that was not a, an adc from my elo at all but i just find kind of adapted to how they played and i played with them i did not do anything by myself i did not do anything that wouldn't benefit my av carry because when it comes down at the end of the day you are the support it is not your time to shine if you want to do that don't play support if you want to help the team you want to help your ad then help them and I think that is definitely something that's just causing you to have a really terrible time with a lot of these AD carries is because unless your ADC is like a legend, your ADC sucks. But they only suck because you're not helping them get through the sucky part. The sucky part of ADC is laning. Once they start team fighting, it's the harder part, don't get me wrong, but it's the funner part, right? Nobody really likes laning too much. It fucking sucks, especially when champions are stronger than your champion. You can't really do shit other than sit there. So yeah, play with your ADC more. Understand what my ADC wants to do. Understand what their ADC wants to do. So this means you're gonna have to take that time out and really study these AD carries, you know? What is what do these champs do? And of course, just ask me. Actually, I said I was gonna make a video, I think, or like a a uh, a guide for supports on my Patreon or some shit where I would have what each ADC wants to do and where are they good at. Maybe I'll do that for all the, all the roles. Should I do that for all the roles? Let me know in the comments below. Should I do that for all the roles? Should I make it so that every role has a specific sheet of top, jungle, mid, ADC support on what champions are good early, mid, late? Because I knew I was going to do it for AD carry, so let me give you that help. Um, and kind of see. So... Maybe list their strengths and weaknesses too. I don't know. That's up in the air. But if you guys think that would be something you guys would want, let me know. As I said, it will be for Patreons though, so I apologize. But you know, still, you know, let me see if that's. Let me know if that's something you guys think that I should do. Um, and then the next thing is number three. You know, when there's something stupid happening, don't just go over there and try to clean it up. Do something else. That was definitely the game-winning play to go mid. Get this. Rotate top after we killed those two those three they would rotate we kill them and then we probably just end the game right then and there We had Baron. There's no way we probably would lose if we went there But instead we decided to kind of do and follow what Udyr was doing instead of using him to be a distraction Okay, so when people are not grouping Udyr can't group anyway, so don't even fucking try to get that champion to group There's a lot of champs that just aren't good at it. So don't think that well, we can group No, some champs just fucking suck at it so do not think that just because we play as five we win fights it is not how league of legends work champions just are not good at it sometimes and um when you have someone not grouping and you, even if you want them to and they're not 
Well, don't try to yell at them. Don't try to get them to group. They're just not going to. So you have to play with the hand you're dealt. Uh, well, what can I do? Okay, well, match Udyr's split. When Udyr splits, we need to go do something. Because then that makes it seem like that guy splitting isn't trolling. And it makes it seem like that guy is actually doing something. And because it seems like he's doing something, he's going to play a lot better. Because he's like, oh, they need me to do this. Got it. And then there'll be a distraction. Like, work with them. You can't have it go your way. You got to work with them. Okay. That's pretty much it, though. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys like a free VOD, remember, join my Discord every weekend. I open it up. Put your op.gg in there. You get some free VODs. Uh, if you guys like free coaching every week or every month, I don't know yet. Make sure that you guys go ahead and subscribe. Only subscribe if you enjoy the content, though. Do not subscribe if you don't enjoy. Okay? If you if you enjoy this video but don't want more content, hit a like, though. You know, give, give me that like. The thumbs up. It's nice. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for approaching this like a coach.